Excellent. Haleakala is my favorite spot on the planet. Understandable. My favorite spot in Hawaii. That's uh, uh, totally understandable, dude. Now you can see it for yourself, what I've been talking about. That's right. <laughs> it like, looks like the moon, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, the moon's got nothing on this. <laughs> Full body beer. Full body beer. Full body beer. What's your favorite brand? My favorite brand of full body beer? Coors Light. <laughs> but anyway, you see. Oh, yeah, you're sporting now. That's it, you're working it. Oh, you get the lean on the armchair. You're working it now. When I close the door, you gotta have a pose there. You can That's make right. the bicep look bigger. That's right, there you go. Like this, at the window. You gotta make work it. <laughs> show, us press. What you, show us what you're working with. You gotta press on top of it, yeah, and push them up. There you go. It's all about attitude, see? Right. You can have a truck, but you have to have the attitude. Absolutely. So the attitude is kind of like, you know, don't mess with me. Yeah. Because you see this, you see how big the tires are? <laughs> it can roll over things. <laughs> the bigger the wheel, the, the more you can climb on top of something and crush it. Uh huh. Roll over it. That's you can, right. You can even roll over cars if you want. There you go. You know. That's exactly what it was on the long miles away. It transpired from 911 which I'm sure led every American and a lot of other individuals throughout the world to contemplate and to redefine or to question themselves or to question our communities, question our origins, our point of origins and, and where we're headed, where did we come from, where are we going, where am I at? And so that was my experience also, especially being uh, directly hit as a resident of Manhattan and being there on that very day, on that tragic day, that life-altering historical moment um, I did the same and I really realized and questioned and looked within myself and I thought of myself like never before and I even thought of leaving and saying this is not worth it you know the world is ending the life is short it's becoming more better the life is short so you know I actually took a break I took a break for two or three years and have never I've never done that in all my 14 years of being away and thank God I did you know because it really allowed me to get to know myself like never before I started to begin to see myself outside looking in. Even more so, I began to really connect to seeing myself inside looking out like never before. Has got to be nurtured. Everything in life has got to be nurtured. It has to be fed, including the spirit. And if you don't, then it dies, or it withers away. And in that sense, being surrounded in a place that doesn't, you know, in a place like Manhattan that doesn't uh, easily welcome an open, expressive, caring, loving, helpful person without being perceived as being weak or stupid or having ulterior motives, um, it was very difficult. So just in being, living my normal life, just living my private personal life was a struggle, you know. The ladies are waiting. Oh, we had a great trip. Mommy, mommy, mommy. Hello. You put that hat on, you take that hat off, now you put on the other hat. And I struggle so much with that because I don't know how to be two people. I don't know how to be anything else but me. And the fresh product is eating it. Mm, mm, mm. Going on 15 years now, and um, it's taken this long for me, and I still struggle. You know, it depends on my mood. It depends on if I'm tired. It depends how long I've been away from my plate lunches <laughs> because, you know, if anybody that has been here visiting me from away in the mainland, they will testify. There's a balcony out there, but hey, it's dark so you can't see anything anyway. The 
my, what I'm trying to say is my nature is lazy. And it's easy to be lazy when you're in tropical paradise. And the sun is shining so comfortably. It's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's jazz, right? You know, and the trade winds are blowing. As it blows, you smell beautiful flowers and you eat the most delicious food. You know, ono as we say here, delicious. And so your opu, your stomach is full now. You have the best of company and you know, everybody's demeanor is low key and kick back and slow and take your time and smell the flowers and you know, gotta, you know, chill out, just hang loose. And so when you hang loose, it's easy to get tired. <laughs> it's easy to want to take a nap. So I think the Is it derives from the Hawaiian language, and yes, it is Hawaiian language. I would never put myself anywhere near artists like the former is, or the brothers Casimero, you know, Robert Casimero, Roland Casimero, or you know, the real Hawaiian language as it is spoken and you know, pronounced and pieced together or phrased. But it was important for me to put the Hawaiian language on this album for the mere sake that uh, it is a language and it's a real language and it's the second fastest dying language and culture in the world next to the Aborigines. So I felt it was important to perpetuate the language and I've also had many... <laughs> when they say scene come, we're going to see the real presence. Well, how about this then? We're so excited to see the real present. Right now we only get the coconut fence stuff, but we get the real metal fan things. You know, more like stone fence stuff. You know? It all begins with the fact that my father is pure Japanese. So I, that automatically makes me 50% Japanese and I'm a direct descendant from Japan. And my ancestors in Japan, and from what I understand, Katsura, which is my last name, comes from a emperor, Emperor Katsura, which means wig. Why wig? Because geishas wore wigs. And in those days, only the emperor or those people could afford to have geishas. So I know that much about my background. I have a great grandmother who just recently passed away who's pure Japanese and she spoke Japanese and, but I was never um, I'm not saying interested I'm a local so I always identified through my Hawaiian side my actual culture or my multicultural blend is Japanese as I just stated Chinese Filipino Spanish Hawaiian Irish English and German and obviously the other set of cultures and uh, races uh, derived from my mother, which we call poi dog, which they call in the mainland a mutt, you know? I'm a mutt, but I've heard that if you connect it to dogs or translate it to dogs, they're the smartest. <laughs> They've got the best demeanor and mutts are supposed to be the smartest, so I guess I'm a smart mutt and that's the trade-off, you know? I'm not a purebred. I'll probably never win a ribbon that way, you know? I'll probably never be able to compete in the, the best of show or the best of show or whatever. But at least if I, if in any consolation, you know, I'm very wise and uh, very gifted in that sense. Um, the Japanese... My prize baby, yeah. And then I'll show you my surfboard. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I got a big board, man. Oh, yeah. You got a big truck, Rodney needs a big board. <laughs> so if you see that big surfboard, I'm not even joking, man. You're gonna freak out because I'll show it to you. I'm actually gonna use that board in the video. Okay. Uh, I'm not gonna actually surf for you guys because lately my back's been a little bit sore. <laughs> oh, okay. And and plus. That's what I used to know. Not because I didn't care. It didn't turn me on. I wasn't interested. It's just that I'm such a local person that I'm a local, and it ain't about being a Japanese. Chinese, Filipino, Spanish, Hawaiian, Irish, English, German person, or even a Hawaiian. Being a local is being a local, you know? And being a local doesn't matter what race you are. So, you know, my focus is always on just being a local here. And it probably still is. Why am I telling you? 
stocked with a lot of cool stuff in here, like water and stuff. So that's a beautiful refrigerator. That's what I used to be.